I'd like to thank the Scientific Program Committee for the opportunity to present our talk entitled Optimal Hepatic Surgery, Are We Making Progress in North America? Optimal means the most desirable or favorable and has been used by the American College of Surgeons dating back to the early 90s to describe best practices for patient management. Optimal outcomes for pancreatic surgery have been described previously based on procedure-specific outcomes that are collected as part of ACS NISQIP. Composite measures, like optimal pancreatic surgery, help to provide a more global picture of the patient experience and are thought to represent a more accurate approach to measuring surgical quality. To this end, we propose the term optimal hepatic surgery, which was defined as the absence of postoperative mortality, serious morbidity, invasive procedures and reoperations while maintaining an acceptable postoperative length of stay with no readmission. Hepatic surgery is high risk, but regionalization has occurred and more minimally invasive hepatectomies are being performed. With the efforts from associations like the AHPBA and programs like ACS NISQIP, best practices have been defined with the goal of improving outcomes. But whether these efforts have translated into an increase in the number of optimal outcomes is unknown. As such, the aim of this study was to assess North American trends in the management of patients undergoing major and partial hepatectomy and to quantify the delivery of optimal hepatic surgery over time. We started by querying the 2014 ACS NISQIP procedure targeted hepatectomy database to identify patients having undergone elective hepatectomy. Patients were stratified by major or partial hepatectomy and multiple patient, process, procedure, and post-operative outcome variables were captured and analyzed over time. Risk-adjusted time trend analyses were performed from 2014 to 2017. Between 2014 and 2017, nearly 13,000 hepatectomies were performed, including 4,000 major and nearly 9,000 partial resections. Shown here are patient demographics and operative management for those who underwent major hepatectomy compared to partial hepatectomy. Patients who underwent major hepatectomy tended to be younger, male, have a lower BMI, an ASA of 1 or 2, and receive neoadjuvant therapy. In addition, compared to partial resections, majors were more likely to have had a Pringle maneuver performed during surgery and have an intraoperative drain placed. However, a minimally invasive approach was utilized more often in patients undergoing partial hepatectomy. When looking at the trend over time, a minimally invasive surgical approach was used more in partial hepatectomy at 34.2% than for majors at 13.7%, but as you can see, increased over time for both. During this time period, the use of laparoscopic surgery remained relatively constant, whereas the use of the robotic platform more than doubled from 1.1% in 2013 to 2.8% 2 in 2017. Shown here are the operative outcomes for major hepatectomy over time starting in 2014 to 2017. While the mean operative time was reduced over the study period, none of the components of our composite measure, optimal hepatic surgery, improved over time. While the percentage of optimal outcomes did improve by 1.3% over this short time period, this did not reach statistical significance and is in contrast to a previous analysis of both Whipples and Distals where optimal outcomes did increase over time. There were improvements over time across the board in the outcomes of patients who underwent partial hepatectomy. Operative time was reduced, again despite the increased use of a minimally invasive approach, there were slight improvements in mortality and serious morbidity. And there were statistically significant reductions in the need for invasive procedures postoperatively. The number of patients with a prolonged length of stay was reduced and taken together, the percentage of patients who experienced an optimal outcome increased by nearly 4% in only four years. When looking at all patients who underwent hepatectomy, optimal outcomes increased over time. And again, this was driven primarily by those who underwent partial hepatectomy. Optimal hepatic surgery increased over time for partial and for each year was greater than for major hepatectomy. 
So just to briefly summarize, we found that over a four-year period in North America, minimally invasive hepatectomies have increased while operative time has decreased. Optimal hepatic surgeries increased for partial and all hepatectomies and is achieved more often in partial than in major resections. So how do these findings compare to that of other studies? I ultimately wanted to put these findings into perspective and close with a couple of other studies that have looked at composite measures in hepatic surgery over time. Here are the results from one study led by the team here at Ohio State where they looked at just under 2,000 patients undergoing curative intent resection for primary liver malignancies. These included both hepatocellular carcinoma and intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma abbreviated HCC and ICC, and this is over a 12-year period from a large international multi-institutional data set. They were interested in the composite measure of textbook outcomes, which is very similar to optimal hepatic surgery in many ways, the variables of which are listed on the x-axis in the figure and were included in their definition. And you can see how each of these individual metrics contributed to the composite measure of textbook outcomes shown in the far right, and it was stratified by ICC and HCC. They also assess rates of textbook outcome over time, and like our study, found an increase in the percentage of patients achieving a textbook outcome, and these are statistically significant. Notice, however, that the rate of improvement was greatest over a similar time frame as our study from the ACS NISQIP dataset. They also assess rates of textbook outcome over time, and like our study, found an increase in the percentage of Importantly, they found that the achievement of a textbook outcome was associated with prolonged survival in both patients with ICC, which is shown on the left, and HCC, shown on the right. And this was statistically significant with a p-value of less than 0 0.001 for both patient cohorts. So to wrap things up a little early so that we have time for adequate discussion, we'll conclude by saying that composite measures are a valuable tool to help quantify surgical quality in patients who undergo hepatectomy. The number and type of variables to include vary slightly among studies and is still being actively investigated. Optimal outcomes represent an important benchmark that we've seen in several studies have increased over time. Thank you again for the opportunity to present. I'll be happy to take any questions.